How does someone go from the pinnacle of success to facing legal troubles? Join us as we explore the rise and fall of Ronaldinho, once celebrated as one of football's greatest but now entangled in legal issues. We'll unravel the events leading to this unexpected turn and examine the lessons we can learn from his journey. Welcome to the B-World Soccer, a channel dedicated to the latest and greatest in the world of soccer. You will be captivated by today's amazing video, Ronaldinho Football Star to Real Life Criminal. Ronaldinho was born on March 21, 1980 in Porto Alegre, Brazil. He came from a poor family. His father, Joao Moreira, worked as an iron bender and welder in a shipyard. He used to play football too. Ronaldinho's mother, Moguela Diazis, first sold cosmetics and later became a nurse. Growing up in Porto Alegre, which was known for being poor and tough. Ronaldinho's family faced financial struggles. His father's welding business didn't bring in much money. Ronaldinho's older brother, Roberto, also played football, hoping to earn money to support the family. Ronaldinho was close to his mother, Miguela, who worked hard to support the family. Roberto, who was 10 years older than Ronaldinho, was not only intelligent, but also managed Ronaldinho's football career. When Ronaldinho signed with Grêmio, a professional club in Brazil, they provided the family with a better home. Previously, the family lived in a wooden house in a slum. Ronaldinho's father also worked as a security guard at the stadium to earn extra money. Roberto's success in football helped the family leave the slums behind, but his dreams were shattered by a knee injury. Ronaldinho, inspired by Roberto, started taking football seriously at the age of seven. He trained with his brother who saw potential in him. Roberto pushed Ronaldinho hard during training, sometimes making him do 500 juggles. This made Ronaldinho angry at first, but he later understood the importance of the training. Under Roberto's guidance, Ronaldinho developed excellent dribbling and ball control skills. He practiced futsal initially, which helped him hone his skills. Transitioning to soccer marked a turning point in his career. Ronaldinho idolized his father, who who passed away when he was young. His father's death was a difficult time for him. Despite the challenges, Ronaldinho continued to pursue his passion for football. He credits Roberto for being a major influence and guiding force in his career. Ronaldinho's talent and hard work eventually led him to play for clubs like PSG, Barcelona and Milan, where he achieved great success. In his acceptance speech after receiving the FIFA World Player of the Year award, Ronaldinho thanked Roberto, calling him his idol. He acknowledged Roberto's support and encouragement throughout his journey. When Ronaldinho's family moved into their new mansion with a swimming pool, they were filled with hope for a better future. However, tragedy struck on a day meant for celebration when Roberto returned from training to find their father had suffered a fatal heart attack while swimming. Ronaldinho was just eight years old at the time. Despite the loss of their father, Ronaldinho held on to the advice he received from him, to be honest and play football simply. With their father gone, Roberto stepped in as a father figure for Ronaldinho and his siblings. He took on extra responsibility and supported the family with the money he earned from football. Unfortunately, Roberto's promising football career came to an abrupt end due to a serious injury. Ronaldinho feared their family would struggle financially again. Determined to make things work, he focused on his own football career, aiming for national and global attention. Ronaldinho started playing both futsal and soccer regularly. Futsal, a variation of soccer played indoors, helped him develop his skills and gain attention from fans who admired his Brazilian samba style of play. His nickname, Ronaldinho, meaning small Ronaldo, became well known. Despite playing on makeshift fields with little grass, Ronaldinho's talent shone through. He credited his unique playing style to the lessons he learned from his brother Roberto and his experiences in futsal. Ronaldinho studied past great players and dreamed of following in their footsteps. His breakthrough came when he scored an impressive 23 goals in a single game at the age of 13, earning him the title of Brazil's most talented youth soccer player. He continued to excel, leading Brazil's under-17 national team to victory in the FIFA Under-17 World Championship in Egypt. Soon after, Ronaldinho signed his first professional contract with Gremio, one of Brazil's top teams. His skills on the field, including a memorable dribble past Brazilian legend Dunga, caught the attention of clubs worldwide. In 2001, Ronaldinho joined Paris Saint-Germain PSG for 5 million euros following his brother's advice. He made an immediate impact, scoring crucial goals and helping PSG win the Coupe de la Ligue. Despite interest from Arsenal, Ronaldinho chose PSG, wearing the number 21 jersey in his first season. Ronaldinho's talent and success continued to grow, making him a star player for 
PSG and later earning him moves to other top clubs like Barcelona and Milan. His journey from a humble beginning to becoming one of the world's best football players is a testament to his determination, skill and the support of his family, especially his brother Roberto. After Ronaldinho's time with PSG, his success on the field was overshadowed by reports of his focus on nightlife and tardiness returning from holidays, which frustrated manager Luis Fernando. Despite this, Ronaldinho returned for a second season with PSG and made a significant impact, winning fans' choice for goal of the season and leading the team to the Coupe de France final, although they lost to Auxerre. However, PSG's poor league performance led Ronaldinho to express his desire to leave the club in 2003. This sparked a bidding war for his services, with FC Barcelona and Manchester United vying for his signature. Acting on his brother's advice once again, Ronaldinho chose Barcelona and fulfilled his dream of joining one of the world's most prestigious clubs. His arrival was celebrated by thousands of fans, and he played a key role in defeating rival Real Madrid and finishing second in the league. Ronaldinho's stellar performances continued, culminating in the 2004-2005 La Liga title and the 2005-2006 UEFA Champions League victory, where he was instrumental in Barcelona's success. His outstanding season earned him numerous accolades, including FIFA Pro World Player of the Year, European Footballer of the Year, and the Ballon d'Or. After two more successful seasons with Barcelona, Ronaldinho moved to AC Milan in 2008, agreeing to a lucrative deal. Although he started well, his form declined due to reported interests in nightlife and a lack of dedication to training. However, he bounced back in his second season, leading Serie A in assists and contributing to Milan's success in winning the league. Ronaldinho's time at Milan was fruitful, but he eventually left the club after the 2010-2011 season amidst rumors of a return to former club Gremio. Instead, he joined Flamengo, where he enjoyed further success, winning several titles. However, disputes over unpaid wages led to legal action against Flamengo. Following his stint with Flamengo, Ronaldinho signed with Atletico Mineiro, helping the club achieve success in domestic competitions and earning personal accolades such as the South American Footballer of the Year. He also competed in the 2013 Club World Cup with Atletico Mineiro. Ronaldinho continued his career with various clubs, including a brief spell with Queretaro in Mexico, where he received a warm reception from fans. However, his time with Fluminense in Brazil was less successful and he terminated his contract by mutual agreement. After retiring from professional football, Ronaldinho briefly played futsal in the Indian Premier Futsal League before officially announcing his retirement in January 2018. Despite UPs and downs in his career, Ronaldinho's talent and charisma left an indelible mark on the world of football. During his time with PSG, Ronaldinho continued to represent the Brazilian national team in international tournaments. He played a crucial role in Brazil's victory at the 2002 World Cup, forming a formidable trio with Ronaldo and Rivaldo. His memorable 30-yard goal against England in the quarterfinals was a highlight of the tournament. Despite failing to win the 2003 Confederations Cup, Ronaldinho helped Brazil secure their second title in 2005. However, his hopes of winning a second World Cup were dashed with a quarterfinal loss to France in 2008. He retired from international football without making appearances in the 2010 and 2014 World Cups. Off the field, Ronaldinho's brother Roberto acted as his manager while his sister managed his press affairs. Ronaldinho married Brazilian dancer Janaina Mendes in February 2005, and they had a son named after his late father, Joao de Souza Moreira. He later married Priscilla Coelho, who sued him for a share of his earnings between 2012 and 2018. Despite lucrative sponsorships with top brands like Nike, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, Ronaldinho faced legal issues, including unpaid taxes and creditors filing suits against him. In March 2018, he joined the Brazilian Republican Party and endorsed Jair Bolsonaro in the 2018 Brazilian presidential election. In March 2020, Ronaldinho and his brother were arrested in Paraguay for attempting to enter the country without a visa. While in prison, they participated in and won a futsal tournament with their prison team. They were released from prison in August 2020 after agreeing to a plea deal and paying fines. Despite his legal troubles, Ronaldinho remains known for his carefree personality. Off the field, he is passionate about cars and has been seen driving various exotic vehicles. While his football career has cemented his status as one of the sport's greatest entertainers, Ronaldinho's life off the pitch has also garnered attention. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss another great B-World soccer video. Until next time, we look forward to seeing you in our next video.